Welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District Monthly Meeting. It's Wednesday, November 18, 2015. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're honored today to have Senator Stiles here. She uh, was at a sea level rise conference, and, I, and she's going to give us an update on, on the conference. Well, thank you. It's always nice to be with you. It's, I always say any day is a great day at the beach, so uh -huh. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here. Um, actually, Commissioner Ladd sent me an email and asked me if I would just kind of fill you in on what that was all about. Um, that was a conference that was put together by the uh, Union of uh, Concerned Scientists and the World Re uh, Resources Institute. And then uh, Mayor Lister from Portsmouth and I uh, hosted the conference uh, for them. And it was an invitation that they put out to uh, elected officials from around the coastal um, states around the United States. And we had actually 23 of the coastal states were represented at that conference, uh, 35 mayors from different places. And it was to bring them in to find out you know, they're on the ground seeing what's happening when, and having to deal with the uh, flooding when it, when it happens. And so it was really interesting to see, to hear from them of the experiences that they had and what, what roadblocks they ran into, especially with the feds as well as with their own state governments. So what, really, what I really see that came out of that was that it's important to identify uh, what's a federal responsibility, what's a state responsibility, what's the local community's responsibility, and what's the individual's responsibility. Because uh, we are seeing a lot more flooding. And uh, it was interesting, because I was talking with one of the scientists the other day, and he said, you know, it was really interesting for me to be at that, uh, that, at that session, because he said, I'm always at meetings with scientists. And I really never hear from the people that are on the ground having to deal with all of these things. So it really gave me a different perspective um, on the whole thing. And we really did have some great presenters. Um, I'm going to look at their names so that I get them correctly. We had Dr. Um, uh, uh, Catherine Sullivan, who is the administrator for NOAA. And thanks to uh, Senator Shaheen, she was able to convince her to take a few minutes. And Representative Cushing and I went into a meeting with her and some of the fishermen to deal with some of the uh, issues that the fishermen have. So. She was pleased to be able to hear. You know, you really have to hear from the people that are doing the job to know what's, what's really happening. So um, that, was, uh, that was an extra benefit, actually. Um, then there was Jonathan White, who was a, a rear admiral for, and former oceanographer from the Navy. And he talked about what he had seen happening you know, out on the water uh, over the past uh, few years. And the other thing that was interesting when I was in with the fishermen, um, one of the things that they said that caught my attention was that they had noticed, probably in 2005, that the fish that needed colder waters were going, moving, kept moving north because the waters were getting warmer in the south and that was causing some of the floodings. Um, then we also heard from uh, FEMA, uh, the representative <coughs> from FEMA, who was talking about insurance, which I know is important to all of you that live down here on the beach, um, and some of the things that the communities could do to uh, reduce their, their liability and their, and their costs. And then we also heard from uh, Larry Concheri, I think that's how you say his name, uh, who, who is from the uh, Corps of Engineers, uh, who also reported out to us. So what they're going to do is they're going to try to uh, consolidate consolidate all of the information that was gathered at that meeting and the presentations that were done. We should be able to get the, the copies of the PowerPoint so people could see them and get them onto the, a, a website so people could access them and see exactly what happened. But it was really good to have people who were in a position to be able to make decisions in their communities. Uh, so the mayors and um, uh, for the selectman representatives from Hampton, uh, both Rusty Bridle and Jim Wardell, um, were there 
at different at different points in time. Uh, Selectman Wolseley was going to come, but she hurt, did something to her foot, so she wasn't able to come. So I quickly called to see if we could get other representation, and so Jim came in on Saturday and Rusty came in on Sunday, so we were able to have some locals there as well, and we had some rep representative Rice was there as well. <laughs> So, uh, and uh, Representative Cushing and myself. So, um, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Otherwise, I'll tell you about a couple of the bills I've put in that you might be interested in. <laughs> uh, there are three bills that I've put in that probably would generate some interest um, to you. One well, has to do with the clothing issue. So when that bill does come up, I have filed it confidentially until it's time to put it out to the public um, because we're still trying to deal with how to address it in a constitutional way. But when it does come out, I would appreciate if you know some of the people from the beach could come up and speak to it at the hearing. I'll let you know when that is. Um, then I finally put in Tally's bill for the state park license. Tally's been after me for how many years, Tally? Four or five? <laughs> Is this, or five this years isn't something anyway. new you've been talking about, Charlie, <laughs> is it? <laughs> so um, I uh, put in the bill to um, allow people who have state, license, uh, state park licenses to be able to park. Um, Charlie asked me to do it on school days, and I started out that way. And then the parks came back to me and said, no, Nancy, it's going to be too difficult to talk about 8 to 2 o'clock. So uh, they've recommended that I put in state parks, can park at the meters um, free uh, from September 15th to June 15th. So it would give you a longer period of time. Um, I think it's a maximum of like eight hours, five hours or eight hours or something like that. So you couldn't like leave your car there for a month. You know? But um, so that's the way it's going forward. And, and as many of you know, Legislation starts out one way; it could end up very differently, but that's how it's it is going forward. So, you'd be that include the holidays as well. Uh, no, not holiday holidays and weekends. Excludes holidays and weekends. Excludes holidays and weekends. And because originally Tali wanted it for school days, so we were looking at Monday through Friday initially. That's what I was looking at, and I was looking at a time frame. And they said, Nancy, that's going to be just too difficult to enforce. So, and people won't know when Hampton's got school days and when, you know, Berlin doesn't have school days. And so, uh, this way, it's easier just to make it, you know, September 15 to. And June that 15. is the state park license, like the one that has the moose on it, or. No, that's that the conservation plate. So it's uh, the state park plate has a little. It's a square about the Charlie. I don't know if he still has one. Dollars extra. The money's dedicated straight to state parks only. Yeah. It has the little logo, State Parks logo, like Nancy just said. It's got the emblem yeah. of the State Parks. And is that, is there a lot of those? I mean, is there? There's more every year. Yeah. Where do you get them, Charlie? At your, at town hall. At your register. When you register your car. I could ask one of those instead of a regular and, one. Yeah, and, yeah, and pay extra money, yeah? Oh. Yeah. You have to pay just the like your conservation year, plan. So you might not hit the year because well, it depends on what month your registration comes up. So it might and what are the benefits for that plate? Was there any other? Well, the money goes directly to, to dread, but that's why we're asking for benefits. We're asking that on any day of the school, and that would be based on my opinion, that the spaces are available. You can so get in. Creating a community watch, and you're letting the people go to businesses. And you can get into any of your state parks for nothing. Nice. No. I should have that whole list of uh, all of the benefits, but I don't have it in my head. So. Um, another one that I have is, uh, I have put in for the parks actually, is that there is currently a statute that says that the state parks are supposed to operate as much like a business as possible and to uh, earn their own money since they don't get any from the state. They're self-funded. Uh, self um, and so they've asked that they be able to uh, increase their parking meter fees on events and holidays when the parking lots increase theirs. But in order to do that, they'll have to go before the fiscal committee. They'll have to go before fiscal committee and get that approval. And I can share with you, I doubt that the fiscal committee is going to let them increase it very much. I'd be surprised if they let them increase it more than a buck. But um, I, I got a phone call from Max from the Hampton Union asking me all about it. And I hope he got my, my words correctly. Well, you know, we'll, we'll see. But he had said to me, what do you think? And I, and I had no idea. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. I, I'm glad you figured it out. I, I think that it, it, it's a good idea because, you know, it's supply and demand. Right. As long as they're not gouging, right. and as, and you know if, if if that's a way to bring money into the state park, as long as it's used in the state park, I right. think it's, it's it fine. would be. Believe me, it would it wouldn't go out outside of the, out of the parks. So, if you have any questions on anything, or any, yes, I'd like to comment. Um, Twenty years ago, when I moved into my house that's at Rocky mm -hmm. Bend, yep. um, the water occasionally would splash over. Um, in probably about 10 years ago, the state project, um, the, the uh, wall was another couple of feet were added to it, all the way from Boar's Head to, um, to where the sand is. And so now it's, I would say it's probably three feet tall. And at first, of course, there was no splash over. I do want to say that um, on a regular basis, whether there's a full moon, a new moon, or if there's a storm, for sure, there are times when every wave this past winter, there was at least one storm where every wave splashed over. And it wasn't just a little, it wasn't just splashing and going up in the air. It was actually going right over the road. So at some point in the future, you're going to have to add another couple of feet to that I wall. know that. <laughs> yeah. I was in the middle of, of getting the money for the repairs to the, to the project, and uh, Selectman Woolsey said, Nancy, just stop. You need to make a bigger wall. And I said, just let me get this one repaired first. It seems to be a nationwide and then we'll, problem. And we'll deal with uh, <laughs> adding something, something to it. The it is. And I think that's one of the things that we're seeing. That's why um, this, um, this particular um, seminar and um, I also sit on the Coastal Risk and Hazards Commission with Representative Rice and Representative Cushing um, and, <coughs> and others from all of the uh, Seacoast <coughs> communities, actually. And we are, we are focusing on um, uh, storm surge and uh, increased flooding. That's the t and sea level <laughs> rises in there as well. But, I mean, it's really the storm surges and the uh, coastal flooding that is really hitting us, I think, right now. Um, but I will tell you that what we have witnessed here is nowhere near as bad as what I heard from some of those mayors in um, South Carolina and uh, New Jersey and Florida. Um, I mean, they were really hit hard, really hit hard. So. <laughs> A good example of that would, I'm sorry, let me just, a good example of that would be to um, <coughs> just look at Plum Island and see what's happening there. The mayor from New Report was there and she was referring to how they're losing, yeah. you know, Plum Island. Island. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead, Nan. Uh, go ahead. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I was just going to ask you, you mentioned that at the seminar you talked about the responsibility of the federal government, the states, the local, the individual. Did you, is this written down somewhere? Is there a list? We didn't have any answers. Oh! <laughs> we didn't have any answers. And so that was one of the things that came out was that um, when, we, when we engaged with the presidential candidates that are coming in, uh -huh. the question that they said to ask, which I thought was not the correct question, but um, they said they wanted people to ask, what are you going to do about sea level rise? And I thought, you know, how are people going to answer that question? So my question would be is, what is the role of the federal government in uh, situations where the storm surge and the, if you want to call it sea level rise or flooding, occurs? What is the role of the federal government in helping people? What is the role of the state government in helping people? And how can we streamline that process so that things can get done? Because that's one of the things that the mayor <laughs> the mayor in New Jersey, Hoboken, New Jersey, uh, said, you know, that she could get money for this piece, but the back end of it she couldn't get the money for because it didn't fall into the category. So that was something that um, Noah heard and the FEMA heard and all of them heard. So I think they're going to begin to kind of coalesce and figure out how they can work together when a situation comes up so they can respond to it. Thanks. Anyone else? Welcome. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, Nancy, on the plates, I didn't know if I could get a copy of the, the 
language or when the bill is filed? Or? Uh, sure, I can give you a copy. Uh, let me see, have I signed off on it yet? Uh, no, I just sent it for redrafting because I had sent it originally and it was my language. And then when the parks came back and said, Nancy, let's change it to do it this way. So as soon as it comes back ref uh, you know, redone for me, I'll send you a copy. I'll, I'll email you a copy of it. All right. I'll okay. from Brian. The other question I had on was, I also mentioned at one time, and I don't want to, as they say, baby steps, but I mentioned veterans' plays. I know. Yep. And, and did they consider that? Um, they haven't yet. Um, I had a study committee this year on uh, walking disabled parking, because with the baby boomers retiring and everybody getting new knees and new hips, uh, a lot more walking disabled parking placards are out there. So we have thousands of them out there, thousands of them out there. So we needed to address that as well. So the study committee looked at that this summer as to what, how we could make sure that those who really had the walking dis disability would have appropriate parking and how um, others would make sure that it was them that were in the vehicle that was being parked. There's a way that the local authorities, you know, right. could, could check them right. without infringing on people's rights. Right. To do it. That's interesting. You said the mayor of Hoboken then. The mayor of Hoboken was there. Yes. Yeah. Um, I looked her up later. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Because I saw her. She had another issue. It was the thing with the with the, uh, with, with the governor down there. They actually had had, had some issues on another subject completely. But I looked her up because I, as soon as I saw her picture, I said she looks familiar. Yeah. And, um, and one she, of the, she was raised in Laconia, and she's a graduate of University of New Hampshire. That's right, she, she is, she is. Um, one of the things that they have done in, our, that com in Hoboken now is that uh, there's been no allowance for any building on the, on this, along the oceanfront. No buildings at all. I mean, ones that are there are there, but I mean, there's no, no new ones to go in. So. That's about it. Thank, Thank you. you. And I hate to leave you, but I told you I have the 6.30 meeting on the other side of town, so right. I need to get to that. Thanks. Right. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I want to talk about old business. Maureen, do you want to talk about your, your baby, the parade? Yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> um, Uh, we're, we're working on it. Yeah. Um, there's some mixed messages on it, but we'll, we'll get it done. And uh, there's a few things that uh, Mr. Chairman needs to solidify for us. And after that, we'll be ready to go. So we, we have a truck? We have a truck. We have a truck. Have a truck. Thanks to Tommy Higgins? Tommy Higgins of Harris Real Estate. Will Harris he Real Estate? driving it or no? Tommy, uh, as you know, Tommy's up in Maine. Okay, so... I'll mail him down on Saturday. I'll go right into the office. But um, usually he's here on Saturday, so I'm hoping he will be the one that's going to do it. Oh, okay. His business, you know, it's like yeah. and Wednesday, Saturday, and okay. Monday. Richard Rennie is driving Miss Hampton Beach? Beach. Little Miss, Junior Miss. Well, I don't know. I, John miss. Lyons says Miss Hampton Beach. So okay. I'll find out. One of them. I'll find yeah. the day of the parade. So hopefully you'll be with us since it's a beach thing. That's what he said. Yeah. Same group. All right. And we have our card is ready to go. <laughs> and we're going to need. Oh, uh, well, no, these are from last year. That's who I had right. last year. But That's all right. I don't know if I'm going to have her this year or not, but I'll bring okay. these to the parade and. We need yeah. to do some decorating. So if there's an, anybody out there that's good at decorating the card or have any ideas on the card is going to be the Continentals, and they're going to be playing Christmas music down the boulevard. A different uh, different set of, of songs than what we have. Lovely signage, too. Uh, we have signage, too. We have signage, done. Lovely signage the on, on the front and the back. And the, <laughs> is that both sides? No. I don't front and back, I think, that say you have to be full of sister. They were going to do it on the sides? The side would make sense, no? Yeah, yeah there is another one that's going on the back one. as well, I think. But that's okay. Yeah. Uh, did you find out from John Nyan if we if the sides are? It's all set. Thank you. It's set. Yep. And um, that's it. Anything else on old business? Not that I can think of right now. Bob. Bob? We uh, 
Well, we're in the process of expanding our signage uh, to explain a little bit more clearly to visitors what the district does do, particularly during entertainment season. And we've had a preliminary meeting and agreed on uh, some signs to be near the shell, which will explain every night which group is playing and the hours they will be playing that night. And uh, we are the sponsors. I would also encourage us looking into getting a few uh, see something, say something signs to, and maybe give them to the police department and let them decide where would be the best place to place them. I don't think they cost a lot of money, but it's probably something we should think about. should talk to the police to find out where they want to put them. Yeah. Well, I, know I would think you'd have to talk to the state. If we're going to put them up there, that would be their responsibility <coughs> to either allow us to hang something or not. No? If it's, yeah, it depends. If it's on the telephone poles, it would be... Oh, open down. season, if yeah. it's on the other side. No. Okay. Depends on where you're going to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to stay here for this meeting? Oh, good. So, what's your last name again? McNeil. McNeil. Uh, this is Bill McNeil he, himself and, Mar and Morocco uh, worked all week on pointing up the playground. So I just wanted everybody to check it out. We don't have any loose rocks and any worries there. So we did a great job. I, I walked through it today. So you can have the check. I walked through the playground <laughs> today. Thank you very much, Bill. Oh. All right. Where were we? Can I come in? Oh, Sign is right? Meeting number one already over. <coughs> Thank you very much. It's been a wonderful experience. Uh, no meeting. What band did you hire for the Christmas parade? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We did. We already discussed. You missed the discussion of the parade. So if you have anything to add, that would be the time. Nothing. Are we having a meeting here. No, I, I, while he's here, well, I mean, I don't want... The, the only thing that, that John Nyan said to me specifically is that the fence around the trailer is not a requirement for us, only if we have children riding on the not. platform. We do not, and so we don't need any. Okay. So we can okay. apply it any way we want. Okay. Right, excellent. All right. I'm glad it was on time for that meeting. Any, any, other, any other old business? Uh, we would had a preliminary discussion, a few of us, about coming up with new ideas to expand the offerings, not necessarily high-cost offerings, but if anybody in the room or in the general public who might hear this meeting has an idea or something they would like to see, a particular group, a mime, jugglers on the sidewalks, anything. Event you on a chair. Yeah. An event someone wants to chair. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about for, for the parade, is that what you're talking no, about? No, no, no. No, for the uh, general entertainment oh. season. Yeah, so let us know. We'll Just get in touch like with I'd like to the throw in, if I may, as far as uh, plays go, or musical um, plays, uh, no. they don't work. We've tried. We've, we had one year when and I do a great invitation, I'll do it for you privately later, about how that works if you're across the street. You hear nothing because of the, the um, traffic and the, yeah. So it doesn't work. So if that's an idea, believe me, we've tried. Jack, was it, was it your wife or somebody I hear was talking about maybe starting the season off with the St. Patrick's Day fireworks? <laughs> Not, uh, my, my wife I love that, that idea. <laughs> I don't think there's any place that does it. We could start something. I love that idea. Well, we could talk to. We could have a parade right. too. So I, so I, I have been talking so to. We have enough money, time with you know? this parade. Okay. He wants to spend so much money. Yeah. Parades. He's a liberal. He likes to spend yeah. money. You know. <laughs> how about this for an idea? On the New Year's Eve when we have the fireworks. I think it would be so much fun to have somebody hire somebody with a big drum and maybe a trombone and just have a little parade. Are you volunteering? I don't know. I don't have a, a big drum or a trombone. I'll get the, dr I'll get the drum <laughs> and the camera if you go up and down the boulevard. And, and and have, no, and have, have a New Year's Eve parade. You know, it was amazing last year 
that I was, <coughs> you know, John and I were there. People wear all kinds of funny hats with lights glowing and, right? They're, they're all dressed up for the, for the thing. Yeah. And it was well, how about, how about, so every New Year's we, we've been giving money um, to the Blue Ocean to do the coffee and hot chocolate and, and cookies. Mm-hmm. How about if we throw in a prize for the best hat contest and they can judge it? Oh, or something. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have 15 criteria. Yeah. <laughs> Just an idea. You wanted that? You asked for ideas? I like ideas. It's, it's New Year's. It could be 40 below zero with a blizzard. <laughs> so, so, St. Patrick's Day fireworks. We can look into it. Go off the new season. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> where was I? <laughs> so New Year's, we talked about New Year's. I don't know. Do we, we, I think we budgeted that, so we don't have to uh, vote on that. So we'll be doing that again this year. Is that right? Yes, yeah, I assume so. Yeah. We put the money. yeah, we have that in the budget, so that's fine. Um, we're looking at dates for sand sculpture. We should we'll play into your fireworks if it's that extra date, just to let you know. You might be adding one extra firework. Okay, and that's that's in, so we're looking at the 16th, 17th, and 18th. Um, I've also been talking to RS Fireworks, who's been doing our fireworks, another company called Pyrotechnico, and then a company that did the Seafood Festival fireworks, Atlas, and they're giving me some some uh, quotes and some information. Yeah, so as a long yeah. time ago we had Atlas. Yeah, we what about American, American Thunder? And American I'm, I'm going to send a, a notice to American Thunder who we had before as well. Mm-hmm. And s- just see what they have to offer if anybody has anything different for us and who will give us the, the best contract. So uh, we'll go from there. Well, didn't, we, didn't we have a multiple year contract with the present? Yeah, they got three, three years. So they're they had a three-year contract. Right. So they still oh, have so New so Year's. It's over now? Or? Yeah. That well, was they still, New Year's will be their last shoot. Oh, so. right. okay. um, and then we'll go from there, whether we rehire them. Um, I've gotten feedback on the Seafood Festival, and um, I had a lot of people that didn't think it was that great. So uh, I'd be interested to hear from people what they thought of that shoot and if they've seen any other shoots anywhere of some of the other companies. What the problem is, is they all promise you everything. They have different um, definitions of what an actual shell is. And one of them is telling me, oh, we're going to send a thousand shells up. And I'm like, does that mean a thousand bangs and you're going to do that in 15 minutes? Oh, yeah. There's no possible way. <laughs> I, I, so I don't know if that definition is correct. So I, I have to look into this. But the problem is I'd, I'd like to see what they can do. So I've asked them all for references. Uh, of, of other shoots that they have, but obviously no one's shooting anything in November and December, so it's not like you can go see what kind of work they do. I think one of them, I'm going to be up north over New Year's, and one of them does Cranmore, so I, um, I'm going to check that out and see. Who did the one for the Seafood Festival? That was I did see those, yeah. and compared to RS, they look like fireworks that you'd buy at the place down in, in Seabrook and just you know the, the the amateur fireworks they were not at all they didn't they didn't go up in the air they were they were very all just low small well, fireworks. That, there's that what they call amazed. cakes that they do I'm learning so much about this stuff there's the cakes that they do are, are, are geared to a small area of people that are right in front of it and I think that's what Atlas did a lot of was for the people at just in right front of the there. festival. Exactly. So you being down at by Rocky Bend mm-hmm. probably only saw a third of the oh, Exactly. Fireworks. It looked like an amateur night because right. it, it was all right. It was just mm-hmm. the stuff for right there. Right. But so. you have to remember, whenever they have fireworks, the cars, people, you know, line up from Rocky Bend all the way down. I don't like <laughs> the ones just in that little section like that because, like you said, it looks like amateur fireworks. There's... They can do up to a four-inch shell now. It used to be six-inch years ago, but the state allows up to a four-inch shell, I believe. And there's a big price difference between a two-inch shell and a four-inch shell. And so, if they want to give you 50 two-inch shells and 10 four-inch shells, you're better off with the 10 four-inch shells. That I mean, you have to figure out what's going to work for. for well, whatever, whatever you guys decide, I'll make sure that it bl- we'll blame you, Chuck. I have a question <laughs> about the amount of 
uh, the, the number of shoots. We had an issue last year because one wasn't covered. I don't want that to happen again. Do we know exactly how many shoots we're supposed There's to 18 have? 18 shoots mm -hmm. if, if we start um, the competition um, on the 16th because we usually do the, that Wednesday. 18 including New Year's the following year and everything. 18 shoots. The reason we didn't have that shoot at the end of the season in September was because we all decided, looking back on it, that no one was going to be here. So that was... Uh, that wasn't in September. That wasn't in September that I'm talking about. No, we did. It was in September. It was the... It was Labor Day week. No, Labor Day. It was the third. It was, it was the Wednesday before Labor Day. It was, it, I'm sorry, the second. It was the second because we, uh, the Wednesday before Labor Day, we didn't run it. Right. Because right. uh, we figured right. all the kids were in school, there wasn't going to be, and we, maybe we should have. I don't know. I think so. But the beach was pretty quiet. So well, I, mean, I know that I know that Mike Roy, that owns the Marguerite, said, "What happened to the fireworks?" And he said, "I had guests that were, you know, thought we were going to, and I'm sure you've probably had some guests too that." might have thought they were going to go off. I talked to several people. They were on their way back because they were upset. But when we had done the, did we figure this out in March, February or March, that yeah. we weren't going to yeah. run them then. So maybe it, it's a lesson learned that we, when Labor Day is that late, we still should run them. But because uh, we were running late. Yeah, I think we were just cut back the numbers. So, some of the, so next year. Some of these companies must have like a video or Videos. something on what they yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, especially oh, Atlas and Pyrotechnic. Yeah. yeah, they do. Did, did you get a quote from American Thunder? We, I just said we're going to uh, have to get in touch with them. Oh, okay. That's the only one I haven't heard from yet. So there's four of them. We, I remember American Thunder. We had them for quite a few years. Had an Atlas years ago. And this Pyrotechnico, we had the guy come. They just set up. And, I mean, they're all in Jaffrey, New Hampshire, for some reason. Uh, he had come and talked to us, the main company, yeah. and we just didn't feel comfortable. But now this is a local guy who used to work for Atlas, who Atlas had some issues in Manchester, left there, and he's working for this pyrotechnico. So I, I'm, a, a lot of the issue will be talking to the state fire marshal, which I want to talk to, and the fire department. Um, it's who they get along with yeah. makes it a lot easier. If they don't like someone, yeah. they can shut you down they five minutes can shut you up, shoot. Five, you know, and you have no no recourse. You're just done. The fire marshal said no shoot. Who's our guy? Our guy now is RS Fireworks. No, but who who is fire our fire marshal? Fire marshal. Is it the chief or is it? I think it was the chief it's, this year. Uh, but I it. it used to Actually, be Actually, I think steel. the assistant, um, it spreads... Assistant now, I believe, is the... Jamie? Jamie? Yeah. Jamie? Is the fire marshal? No. He can't be. No, but it was Steele was the one that dealt with them before, and then, then they were dealing this this year with no, they Chief they Aon. <coughs> so it'll be interesting to see where, because it was a big change over this year. They lost a lot of people in the fire department and, and um, for different reasons. So I, I don't know what it's going to be, but it's, it's, it's the state fire marshal. We will know every single one of these companies. They deal with them regularly, mm -hmm. so I want to talk to them about it and go from there. I also want to make sure that the people who come on New Year's Eve follow the directions of the people who are here, like, for example, when John is here. Because you're not here, and you're not here. And I want, I want to I'm be I'm on a familiar relationship up at Cranmore, checking out their fire. That's all right, and I appreciate that. However, uh, I want to make and sure I'm not that even they listen in for to mileage. them. When they, when they, when the uh, suggestions, when John says to them, please don't go over here, that they don't go over there. That was one time. Twice. Twice. Thank you. Twice. You were up in the uh, in vacation. Uh, twice. So I'd like that not to happen again, please. Thank you. It doesn't happen when I'm here. Exactly. Exactly right. What does that say? I've seen the New Year's fireworks. All right. So any other new business? <laughs> Bob, anything? Uh, just a segue to next <laughs> month's meeting. Uh, the town planner and the conservation coordinator will be back next month to bring us up to date on where they're at with the community rating system uh, adventure. 
uh, in letter with Senator Siles said earlier tonight, this is an ongoing process, and it's becoming more focused around the country uh, to all of our benefit, I think. And if I may make one other comment, nationally the fight is going to between, be between the states on the ocean and the inland states over cost sharing. And the, one of the tensions is if you have a disaster and federal money pays to repair that disaster, that money must be appropriated from some other funding source. Uh, that's not in play now. National disasters nationally do not have specific funding. They're, they're like the snow budget. You do what you have to do when you have to do it. So there's going to be a lot of yin and yang going forward because this is a big national <coughs> issue. And I would suggest we all kind of keep aware of it. Maureen, new business? I'd like to welcome that lady that I don't know over there. She's new. Hi, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name? I'm sorry. Terry Parker. Terry Parker. Nice to You're meet you. You're new to the Village District. I've been here a year and a few months. Oh, and you found us. Good. Thanks, right, Terry. Terry. The other Terry. Hey. Yeah. Excellent. Recruiter. She's a recruiter. <laughs> Excellent. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Um, I have a question, and that I don't know if. Uh, Article 6 of last year's yearly meeting was uh, uh, the petition that was passed to defray the cost of bringing the Vietnam moving wall to the beach. Now that, that amount of money was $5,000. It has not been spent yet because they haven't, haven't um, confirmed the days, the dates, and everything else. Do we have to move that money to next year? Or is it because it was approved by the voters, it, uh, it just automatically will go to her next year? Can it be? Do you know this? Paid her $1,000 because she billed us for 1000 right. as a down payment. You need to ask the lawyer that because it's not, it doesn't, I don't know if it's lapsing, non-lapsing. It doesn't say okay. non-lapsing. So I, I don't know. This came up just the other, you know, with the budget committee, mm -hmm. you know, with, the, with the ice pump. Well, yep. well, that's what made me think so, about it. So. Did it have a separate line item, or was it under one of those it was things? A, it was a warrant. It was a warrant on it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, so but it didn't say it had to be done in the year um, 2015, if, the thing, if the thing is coming on the 60th. So I, I will call the lawyer and ask if we have to do anything next month's meeting for it, so I sure. know. Did the warrant article, spec was it specific that it was be, was going to be at the beach? Um, yeah, Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall, moving, moving wall to Hampton Beach. But my f understanding is, if it comes through, it's going to be at the, the parking lot. But Hampton Beach, it's going to be, be at the Church area. Street parking lot. Oh, would that be so? We wouldn't have a problem there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right if they brought it to Tuck Field, that would be a different okay. story, not because it was voted on by the village district. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But I'm just more concerned that if 2016 comes, can we still write the check? Because that's when it's that's when it's supposed to be coming. So I just want to make sure um, we get there on that. The only thing I would add to that is we're helping to defray some of the costs of that, but the district is not sponsoring that event, per se, and supporting it through this financial contribution. It's a fairly complicated thing to bring on. It isn't a village district project. We're just sponsoring. We're donating. We're donating. Right. Sponsoring. sponsoring. Donating. Along with other contributors. Ours. Right, there is right. other people that right. are contributing yeah. to it. It's going to be manned by veterans, um, and, uh, and there's a whole bunch of other people that are donating into it. I believe, what was it, about ten, fifteen thousand? Twenty thousand in all. Yeah, fifteen thousand more than uh, five yeah. is what I meant, but it supposedly yeah. is going to so. be all of that. All of that, yeah. It's exciting if it when it gets here. So I just want to very, very complicated, very complicated. 
All right, so I'll find that out. I'll let everybody know next month. Um, I had the honor of going to the budget committee yesterday. <laughs> They've asked for him back. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Yeah. So it was good. It was it was two hours. I've seen some. Of the, I've seen some of those go four hours. So I was kind of happy. It was only two hours. All right. So uh, other than there's no other new business. We'll go to approval of minutes from our October 14th meeting. Page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. So I have a motion to approve the meetings from October 14, 2015. I'll move to approve the minutes as presented. I'll second. second. All in favor? All right. So now we're going to go to public comment. Does anybody out there have anything to say? <coughs> Glenn, you always have something to say. Come on. Okay. Nothing? Speechless. Charlie's happy he's getting his parking. <laughs> <laughs> and there's free parking over New Year's, so that'll be good, right, for the fireworks. Anybody else? Was well, there supposed to be a meeting of this parade at the galley hatch tonight? According to the rule paper, which was four pages long, it said there was going to be a meeting. Oh. Apparently, uh, well, this is how no was the meeting? There was, was, was no meeting. There was no meeting. Oh. A non-meeting? They, <laughs> they uh, decided that they didn't need to have a meeting after okay. they scheduled it. But apparently this was an older application, and they just included some of the The meeting is supposed to be at the Galley Hatch Pelican Room, which does not exist. Can you tear that down? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, under construction. Under construction. Okay. <laughs> so when you went, were you all alone? or? I, there were about a half dozen of oh. us there looking for the meeting. There were others there holding another meeting at the bank across the street. And we, Did you I crash called it? John Nyan, and John came out and spoke to us. So okay. we're all covered, we're all set, ready to go. That's <coughs> fine. Everything's... This is not complicated. John, you have really? something to say? <laughs> yeah, just... I need my first rodeo. Yeah, I know, but... No. John K. Markham, director to Hampton Beach Village District. Uh, we launched our website, new website That's today. That's good, by the way. Um, there's a lot of links in it. Um, there's a lot of different uh, things that we're still working on. But you can't really work on it until it's out there and s you see how it starts working. Uh, in the development uh, stage, it was very slow. So once you launch it, then we're going to go through and make sure all the links are right, all the telephone numbers, you know, haven't changed. A lot of people will change or they'll drop their website, and you'll see errors, and we hate to seeing that, so usually we'll call them up. Um, it's very interactive where it, it moves all the time. So every day, uh, if something drops off, like if we had fireworks, it would have said, fire, you know, Wednesday, fireworks. Um, you know, first it was the Continentals or Reminiscence or something like that, followed by fireworks at 9.30. The next day, that disappears and one kicks up. So it's uh, extremely interactive. Then you can go to the calendar page and look at everything. But the pictures, um, Chuck, did you get a chance to look? Yeah, it looks okay. good. The, the pictures are much larger, and then you can click on them and they open up and they'll tell you all about the hotel or the restaurant. Uh, and different things that are, you know, about it, their, their telephone numbers, hours of operation. So there's a lot more information. We still have a lot to input because it's, every time you turn around, there's new business or something going on. Can we put in um, the dates for the sand sculpture yeah, that was finalized with us? Yes. Well, um, she had it up. I called her, pull so it down. It was on one of the days, it was a Sunday, was it? Yeah, that? that's, yeah, so that's, now we those, know it's going those to are be just the little quirky things that we'll pick up as we go through. So now we can do that? We can put It's that already on? changed. To what? To the date that you told me, the 16th, 17th, 18th. Okay. Glenn, did you hear that? It's kind of... The, the Saturday is the 18th, not the 19th, so it'll be 16th, 17th, 18th. So the that's sand drop is would be like the 14th. The week so I was right in the first place. Is that what you? Oh, I don't know. Were you? Yes. No. I'm not at all no, surprised. Not on the one I had. Being perfect. No, I know. <laughs> don't I know it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> my calendar it isn't. But. John, the other thing that was in the <coughs> oh, on the, the fireworks. Time. Yes. Um, 18 shoots. Will it say now? Well, it will say 18 only because we include the um, the. Uh, 
the Maybe one for the sea. Se- se- uh, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> 19, no. <laughs> seafood festival. Wait, just to blow it up. Oh, but okay. We'll actually be paying for 17. Including? Including New Year's Eve. Okay. And that week that we didn't do last year. I don't think it's the same worry this year. I think I know. There, there was something about Labor Day. Wasn't there an yeah. issue about Labor Day and then no. the, the Wednesday it before? before. It was mm-hmm. Wednesday before. It was actually, before. it wasn't on the calendar. Yes. Yeah. The Wednesday calendar before. was not on there. The Wednesday before no, is, but it should have been. August. That's my. So. That's but it was, it was on the, in the uh, visitor's guide. The oh, that's right. That's, that yeah. caused The Wednesday issue. before is the 31st, so. So, no problem? It's my birthday. Of course, there's going to be fireworks. Of course. Is Maureen going to be in charge? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. You know what? She's got to get the parade done. Who likes the fireworks? Her so. baby. Mr. Chairman, we yeah. have a question. How long is the sandcastle going to be up? Uh, we're going to have them up through the. Uh, Oh, past the 4th, so that was... The 4th is a Monday. It's the Monday, so I guess when right. they usually take it down. When the commissioners were talking about a shorter period last year, because you're looking at three weeks now. It's been three, three, three weeks. It's been there. three weeks. Right. Yeah. When you had talk and the that, security's an issue. It's right. a lot of money. So, yeah. yes. Do you want to rethink what you're doing? Can <laughs> you talk about it? I said, now there's a good question <laughs> for the chairman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's wrong with you? This you your baby. Yeah, this is your baby now. <laughs> Actually, the biggest problem is volunteers for that third week. One, one of the, the issues. Security too. The money was spent. No, but one of the and issues. And then somebody doesn't show up. And Maureen, what? One of the issues is that does it need to be babysat? Well, all I don't know that. Long? I See, don't know. That's the thing. Does mm-hmm. at night the security? We put money in for the security, but is it as far as the volunteers? Does somebody have to be there every single minute? You can buy a couple of racks and put the put the pamphlets on it, and people can take them themselves. We we make. Well, I'm talking about the time between nine o'clock at night and six a.m. in the morning. Yeah. That's we, what we I'm talking about. We didn't have any problems. Security, we didn't have any problems with security this past time. Uh, there were problems. Yes, we had problems. a few well, problems. Well, what problems. I'm saying yes. is that we had we had coverage. We had people there because I paid for them. So on the beach in the daytime, people come yeah. from God knows where to film and and do all kinds of stuff. There's, there's a lot of things that can happen down there, plus kids, little kids even trying to, you know, get in. This, it, they need to be... We can not, electrify the fence, walking. maybe. Pardon me? Yeah. Yeah. Electrify it's the week prior to the fence. Like, like, yeah. 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 Nice idea. Yeah. Well, the reason why we kept it up is because we pay all this money for these sand sculptures, and we want to get our, our money's worth Absolutely. of people seeing them. Um, we could take them down the 30th. Well, I can tell you that last year there, there were no volunteers for the 4th of July weekend, and so I went down there to help. And I was there in the afternoons, and I was down in, in what they call the pit. I was on the sand handing the brochures up, and I can tell you there were so many people that that had not expected to see them there on a Fourth of July, and they were like thrilled to pieces. Yeah. So, yeah. It, yeah. I think I think it's well worth the you know having them up for the three yeah. weeks. And we have really, a new member really of the really village do. district who's definitely going to volunteer a couple hours. So there you go. Know. <laughs> That's right. We have I just, I just uh, want to say, so, huh? there are problems that go on during the day, and if no one is there, um, I think you're going to be no, we have to have someone gonna have a problem. Well, yeah. We've got to have someone there during you do the day. Have, you do have the woman that you hire. She's there. She's there a lot. She's the three weeks, she's usually yeah. there. She Kim. Plus, yeah, Kim, plus a volunteer. But Kim's almost always there. You know, so I'll talk to you afterwards. But um, there were issues. Yeah, there was been a, there was yeah. issues, yeah. and it took at least five or six of us, and she obviously led the way. But um, well, we had the issues. Yeah, you gotta the, have other protesters there. Uh, not protesters. Uh, well, other pamphlet pass arounders. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there that was the article about. Myself and another person with a guy that climbed up on the stupid thing. <laughs> um, and he was arrested. He yeah. was fined. It's a good thing you were there, Brian. You know? But just the same, I mean, you don't know. And especially during the whole day, you get some kids that, drinking that, on the what beach. What time of day was or that, like Brian? That. At night. It was, yeah, it was around 9 o'clock. 
Well, see, that's the time that's, that's my kind of concern that you, we don't want to place you at risk but you have to, have to protect. Well, no, but I mean, at least someone is keeping their eye on the whole thing. Call 911. Um, they were fantastic. They were there before we got them to the fence. If there's nobody there, it's going to be an attractive nuisance. Oh, it's going to get vandalized. Yeah, that's the point. the question. And people have a thousand questions. Yeah, let's talk about it. We'll bring it up next month and see what we can come up with. If anybody has some ideas, shoot me some emails too if you want. All right, I guess that's it. Closing comments. Morning. Happy Thanksgiving. There everyone. you go. Thank you. Uh, I would ask we all stand for a moment of silence for what happened in Paris. I know if you hear, we talked about getting signs. We're going to, we'll, we'll continue that discussion. All right. On that note, happy Thanksgiving. Have a great evening. And thank you, Channel 22.